I'm Glenn Macnow, Senior Consultant for Seisler Media Associates, and I uh, have the pleasure of sitting down with Larry Seisler today, and we're just going to kind of shoot the breeze for a while. One of the things that I think is interesting um, is neither you nor I started in Philadelphia. Uh, we're born here, raised here, or started our careers here, but we both adopted the city. Give me a little bit of your journey, how you ended up here. Well, it's you know it's very simple. You know, I grew up I grew up in Pittsburgh, outside Pittsburgh, in a small town, and I went to Washington D.C. for college, and then I went back to Pittsburgh um, for law school. But then somehow, and it's a longer story, it, I ended up working in television mm -hmm. at a KDK TV while I was legendary going, station while I was going to law school while I was going to law school at night. And um, it was owned by Westinghouse Broadcasting Company, mm -hmm. and they decided to get into the cable business. And CNN had just started, and they started a competitor to CNN. People don't know this. It was called Satellite News Channel. I remember that. And they had yeah. these different like hubs, mm -hmm. and Philadelphia was one of the hubs. And what they moved, what they decided to do was to move like some of their like low cost but good people into Satellite News Channel. So they offered me the chance to come to Philadelphia, and so we worked out of we worked out of KYW mm -hmm. TV. You know when it was down on Independence Mall, and uh, and then I finished law school at Penn, so I I, tra I transferred law schools. So I really came here, I thought, as part of like a television career, and I thought I was going to be here for like a year or two and then gone. I um, grew up in Buffalo, New York, outside of Buffalo, like you grew up outside of Pittsburgh. By the way, pretty much the same town, except you guys had Major League Baseball, we did not, and a better football team. Okay. <laughs> When I was young, the Bills were actually good, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> um, and so I went to college in Boston, and then I was going into communications, into newspapers. So I did that newspaper vagabond move your way up, right? I started out in small town Florida, then I went to Fort Lauderdale, and then I went to Detroit, and then I got the chance to work for the Inquirer and hoped at the time that Philadelphia would be the last professional stop. I don't know if you when you came here, did you no, have you, no. did, you had no sense you no, were gonna? No, no, I had like four cities that I thought I would want to live in, mm -hmm. um, and Philadelphia was not one of them. Is that right? <laughs> See, I was delighted to I, come here. My my cities were San Francisco, Chicago, Washington D.C., and Pittsburgh. Those were those were my four cities. Having gone to school in Boston. Uh, and lived in the Midwest, lived in the South. I always wanted to get back to the East Coast. I thought it was, I thought this was really kind of the hub of it. And when I came here, I came to work for the Inquirer. So this is in the late 1980s when the Inquirer's winning the string of Pulitzer Prizes mm -hmm. and just was, you know, the, uh, from my way of thinking at the time, the best newspaper in the United States. And it was, it was coming here was all of that. So you came here went to work in an ill-fated cable news operation. Right, then when that fell apart, just worked at KYW. So when that started, because I remember when CNN started, uh -huh. right, and we were all really young in the business. I was on the newspaper end, but we were really intrigued. Did you think at the time that CNN was going to work? I guess you must have, because you took a job in a, in a place like that. Well, you know, I was young, so I think that people thought that cable had a future. And we actually had people from our newsroom at KDK get recruited to to CNN. So, you know, people thought, you know, it could be something. I mean, it's like it's like anything else. Wow, can you do news 24 hours a day just like when they started WIP? I right. never forget that. I had a friend who went to work there and said, "Can you do sports like 24 hours?" It'll never last. Yeah, so uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I look, I remember when, you know, WIP was just like a normal you know, a normal radio it's station. It's anything but normal now. Right. But yeah, so you wonder, can you do 24 hours of, mm -hmm. of anything? And now obviously that's what the whole media landscape is, is 24 hours of everything. So, like, right. I, I, everything got more narrow yeah. cast from I mean, that. yeah. And, and, you know, and it's like, like, you know, KDK radio, for instance, is, is very interesting because even today, if you listen to it, it's, it's news talk. So both of us having moved to Philadelphia, I remember... Um, when you moved to the Inquirer, there was like an initiation for new employees. And I came at a time when the Inquirer was hiring a lot of people. It was not mm -hmm. that long after the Bulletin had died. Right. And the Inquirer was going to really try to grow at the time. And I remember we had this orientation, not initiation, more of an orientation. And 
the first thing I learned about Philadelphia is this is the city that has the most people, the highest percentage of the population who are born here, live their whole life here, and die here. <laughs> and, that, and that always struck me. And so you and I both having come from somewhere else, I will ask you the question that I ask myself. <laughs> At what point do you stop feeling like an outsider? Never. No, really? Never, never. I just think that, uh, and I don't know if that's, you know, me, just because of my, like, western Pennsylvania roots, and just the natural... Let's be honest, and, still a Steelers fan. And, right, know you know, and the natural friction between the eastern part of the state, mm -hmm. you know, and the, and the western part of the state. I mean, look, you know, because of what I do, sure, I, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm part of it. April 1987 is when I bought my house, still live in the same house I bought then. For me, um, ending up here was the best thing that ever happened to us. Um, I, you know, was able to have a career. My wife had a career. We raised our kids. Love it. it, it it's terrific. I feel like a real local, except every once in a while when I'm on the radio, when I'm on the air, a caller will remind me. And, and if the caller disagrees with me, what they can always use against me is, well, you didn't grow up here. You don't know. You, you didn't suffer with us when Norm Sneed was the quarterback. You don't know what it's like to be born at second and shunk. You know, there's, because of what I do, you know, with the political stuff and whatever, there's so much history, you know, the whole Rizzo stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I, my exposure to Rizzo was at the end when he was a completely different guy. When he tried to run in, was he, that was 87, right? It yeah, was, in 87, yeah. you know, yeah. but he, you know, he, he was a completely different guy than, mm -hmm. than he was, so, you know, so, so I don't know the, the bad, you know, I don't know the bad Rizzo. And, right. You know, I wasn't around for the, you know, Clark Dilworth stuff and, you know, I wasn't here when, you know, the Phil, you know, you know, when the Phillies blew the pennant, but I was in Pittsburgh when Bill Mazeroski hit the home run, <laughs> which is my, which is like one of my earliest ever memories. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, but like, for instance, like, I'm not a shore person, okay? I haven't been to the Jersey Shore in maybe 10 years. Why? I didn't grow up that way. Yeah. You know, we okay. didn't, you know, we didn't grow up going to the to the Jersey Shore right. or the you know or the beach or, or whatever. So it's like no loss for me that um, you know we don't have a home or we don't go to the you know Ventnor or Margate or Stone Harbor or whatever on the weekends, you know. There are those certain things I think that are just very specific to Philadelphia that if you aren't cuz you could have become a Jersey Shore person, I could have as well. I married a woman from Cape Cod, so right. that's where we go. There are people here who say, like, oh, you go to Cape Cod, not the Jersey Shore. What's wrong with you? I had a caller tell me, um, because the guy I was working with was going to Europe, and he said, why, why would you go to Europe when you could go to the Jersey Shore? And meant it. And there really is sometimes that, that attitude here. Well, obviously, I go, to, I go to Greece in the summer because, uh, you know, my... Why would you go to Greece when you could go to Margate? Well, but, but you know what? As I tell people... <laughs> The, the Greek islands, it's just like the Jersey Shore for Greeks. Yeah, I mean, is that same, right? It's the same thing. They got I mean, Wawa? It's um, close. It's the same thing if you're like walking in like the town or at the beach, you know, if it isn't for the fact that you're hearing foreign languages and no English, uh -huh. you, you know, you think, you think you're at the Jersey yeah, Shore. Okay. So, so um, you run a firm that uh, deals with many, many uh, issues and, and uh, all kinds of industries. But you've always had your foot in politics. How did you how did you get started in that regard? Well, number one, it's it's the way I grew up in Washington County. My my father was a lawyer, but but he was very he was very involved in in politics, local politics, and you know I had a you know political you know political background and in college and and whatever. But I got into it here because actually I was a producer at, at KYW, and then I I knew that I wasn't going to stay in TV, and. Um, I was recruited to work for uh, Wilson Goods reelection in 1987. Which How was did a, that connection come about? Well, that uh, well, the connection came about you know very easily. Um, there's a, a lawyer here by the name of Ken Jaron, mm -hmm. who's a very very prominent um, attorney, and he was he was close to Wilson Good, and they knew that they might have to do the campaign in a different way, and Ken was very close to the assistant news director KYW TV. Uh, a fellow by the name of Steph Rosenfeld, mm -hmm. and Steph is still uh, around today, you know, doing public relations and communications. And um, it was Steph's suggestion to Ken 
that you know I might be you know I might be a good person uh, for that. So you know it seemed like that would be fun, and and, and it was, and, and it was really you know working for Wilson Good and that campaign has been really the whole foundation for for my career. Got you started doing that. Yeah. So I think like you. I grew up, my dad was not involved in politics in any way, but he was a news junkie, and so I'm growing up in the 1960s when there are issues, you know, civil rights issues and Vietnam War issues and women's rights issues, and the news was huge back then. Mm -hmm. And every night at 6.30, my father would sit down and watch Walter Cronkite. Right. And every night at 6.30, my father would tell me to sit down and watch Walter Cronkite with him. And so, you know, I'm 10 years old and talking with my dad about these national issues, what's happening in Selma, Alabama, and, and all that. And so I always had that in me. Um, went to college, studied history, American history and journalism, and kind of knew early on that the journalism was the direction I wanted to go. Um, started out as a political reporter. I mean, I got lucky, and it, the business was different then, yeah. in that I got a job at 22 on a newspaper. By 23, I'm covering politics. At age 25, they, uh, I'm covering a Florida U U.S. Senate races. I'm working in Florida, and they sent me out to cover the, to the Reagan campaign for two weeks. Oh, wow. And so I'm doing this, and I'm not that impressed with the politicians, although a little bit, but to me it was the giants of, of the industry of, you know, the guy Theodore White is out there on the campaign and mm -hmm. I had read his books and so on and to me that was the tonic, that was the thing. Oh, for the people who don't know that, it's the Making of the President series. Yeah, those were big books back in, in the day. Started in 1960, I believe, right. with uh, John Kennedy, yeah. Right, and those were landmark books yeah. and those were, you know, the, the, uh, the people who, uh, David Broder was one of the guys I who knew, I met. By the way, I knew him. You knew David I'm Broder? Friendly with, I'm friendly with his son. Really? So we, became, we became friendly in Washington, D.C. We actually worked on a campaign. We're, we're still friendly that day. So I knew Dave. We called him Dave. I knew Dave. I, knew, I called him Mr. Broder. I knew Dave very well. Okay. I knew Dave very so for well. people who don't know, he was one of the leading national political well, the columnists. Dean. The yeah. dean at the he Washington was. Post. And know. he was nice enough one day on a bus ride from Tampa to Clearwater, I believe, uh, covering the Reagan campaign, I sat down next to him and he talked to me for an hour and, you know, it was, it was illuminating for me. No, he was a very nice man. Um, so so I, I did that for a long time and loved doing that for a long time and still love politics, don't really do it, but love it. You, did you ever in your life think of running for office? I did run for office. I did. In 1992. Tell me more. It was a great experience. I, I ran for uh, state rep uh, against an incumbent, and um, luckily I lost. Thank God I lost. <laughs> Which I tell everybody, if you've ever had an inkling to run for something, you should do it. Because if you don't, you always regret it, and then you have to hope that you lose. <laughs> so <laughs> so you've, uh, you, you've had quite a path to get here with, with a lot of jobs, different careers deciding not to run for office. You now have a firm that employs uh, 30, 20, 26, 20, 27, 26, 27 people, uh, three offices around the state. Mm -hmm. um, uh, how do you stay connected in that realm? How do you? Oh, no, I think you stay in touch with people. I mean, that's, you know, that's a big thing. I, you know, you, you stay in touch, you know, you got to get out and, you know, things like that. You know, I'm probably not as good, you know, I'm not as good as I, I used to be. I mean, but I, you know, I encourage everybody who works with us that hey you know you got to you got to be out there and you got to get to know people i mean I, agree. I mean the fact of the matter is as as i get older i mean i'm actually watching this transition mm -hmm. as to you know who makes a difference in in philadelphia mm -hmm. and in the whole commonwealth of of pennsylvania and um, so you know i tell the people here i said you know what i don't know this 28 year old state rep right you know I don't know this young reporter at the inquire you have you know yep. you you know you have you have to do it so um, but you know I, I think you know it's it's always about you know maintaining your you know your credibility here's what you said that I that I absolutely agree with which is you have to be seen and you have to be out there yeah. and I have the pleasure of working with some of your younger associates right in somewhat of a mentoring role and one of the things I tell them is 
get off your phone, don't just text people, be out there, see them, take them to lunch, you know, go meet people, yeah. go see people, go be known, so that if you, um, if you know the reporters at the Enquirer and there's a story that you want to get out there, you will have had an experience with that person over a couple of cups of coffee that you can have a conversation that's beyond, yeah. hey, would you want to run my story? Yeah, you know, it's very interesting and there's no guarantee of anything, but... 90% um, of life is showing up. That's right. Right? That, uh, I don't know if that was Yogi Berra or Woody Allen, but somebody said that. I doubt it was Woody Allen. He, okay. Apparently he showed up a little too much. <laughs> In the wrong but places. <laughs> but, but yes, you got to get out there. you got to be there. You gotta, and, and listen, you're a person whom everybody in this city knows in every aspect so you've, you've worked hard for that well we do we do so you know we try credibility is a good thing yeah well 